beautiful moonrise over the valley as evening comes on. Beautiful color. I can zoom in. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in. Yeah, zoom in. Why am I whispering? I don't know. Okay. Welcome back to Ray's A-Frame Adventure. Episode 29. It's been a while since you posted anything. Yeah, you're right, I've been busy. Our viewers thought maybe you fell off the mountain or something. Well, I have done that a few times, but I'm still here. Well, let's get to it. April 29th, beautiful, beautiful spring day yet again. I've uh, got all, let's see, Sunday went in, went to church in town and uh, came back with a load of stuff after my flooring came in. So I've got that there on a pallet and a couple of doors, wood doors there. And I barely made it up the hill with all this stuff. It was pretty heavy, that pallet of flooring there probably, I don't know, six, 700 pounds. And then our, my two commodes there, a black and a bone one. So excited about getting those in. And the buzzards are flying over again. I'm not dead yet. That's a not hawk yet. sound, not okay. a buzzard. Whatever. Okay, I've got all the uh, wood unloaded. And, uh, I was sorely mistaken. I thought it was 600 pounds or something. And then I just noticed a, a two-man team lift at 88 pounds a box. Yeah, it'll be a win. Yes, yeah, so that was like well over 1,000 pounds. And I need help getting those last bit. Hey, you, you over there. Yeah, yeah, you. Can you come help me with this? Do you, you got something else to do? You can't? I just got one more box. Really? No? <sighs> yeah. I was sadly mistaken. Okay, getting ready to install the Glacier Bay toilet here in the lower. It's black, too. Beautiful, baby. Black is beautiful. Anyway, getting ready to install that here in the bathroom. And uh, looking at the tab here that was on there, it said, uh, knock this out before you install it. So I'm just hitting it with a hammer, not really knowing what I'm doing here. But apparently, I got to knock that out before I install the commode. So we're gonna do that. You just make this up as you go then, along, uh, don't you? I bought this. Rats, you're onto my secret. I know wax seal probably comes with this unit, but I actually bought this, which is a wax free one. And it's got an adapter as far as the height and stuff because I laid my tile. And this was installed first, which is probably better to install the tile since it was already there. I laid the tile around it. So I wanna, I gotta create a little space so that this is flush here. So I gotta. Add a, I, I bought a couple of th different things, a ring here to go on here, or that unit. So I'm going to try several different things to see which works the best here. But I'm going to try to get, I think, go with that waxless unit. So it looks like we're working in the dark again. So according to the instructions, it's pretty straightforward. You just take these bolts and uh, they just slide in. I got a little washer here that holds it kind of in place. And then the wax ring, and I'm using all of the wax. The, not, it's not really wax, it's a foam rubber. And I'm using the full thickness that came with the kit. It's actually got two things on there. But that 3 8 inch spacer there um, on the middle of it, that's actually going to compensate for the fact that the tile is about 3 8 inches above the flange here. So that's going to create space. And then this just goes on the pins here. And then the toilet with, the, with this part, yeah, with the red part there, uh, facing down there in the hole. And that goes on there, and then we'll just set the tank on top. That sounds doable. Okay, what I was, look at this hole. It's, it's weird because the sunlight is coming under the house. And uh, it's just glowing there. It kind of looks like this is like the pit to hell there, you know, of course. No, it's kind of really, it's kind of close, but... <laughs> So, that's <laughs> just, anyway, I digress. Let me uh, get this thing installed. All right, so the uh, nut, uh, the, the um, yeah, the threaded rod comes up through there, there. The bolt and the nut just goes over and it's a lock nut and a wa washer first to give you pressure than a lock nut. And then this just gets tightened down and just alternates sides here and snugs it down. What could be easier than that? All right, just a quick note here. Um, I ended up tightening that down with a socket, but the reality is, is the unit that came with the toilet, not the separate ring system, uh, actually had a wing nut, which I like better because you can just hand tighten that, so there's no ch really chance of over tightening it or breaking anything. Plus, the kit also came with this washer, which is like a black washer. And this allows for a pop-on system to cover the uh, nut once it's in there. Or once the bolt's coming up there, you go to cover it. So I just kind of mixed and matched and took out what I wanted out of this. Uh, but it, uh, it's working good. Well, I tried to follow the video for, or excuse me, yeah, video. I tried to follow the instructions for installing the lid here. And then I gave up and I thought, this is ridiculous. Because all you do is just pop the cap off, drop the nylon bolt in there, and then get your nylon washer and uh, nut and just go underneath and tighten them up. I don't know, it was like really, really uh, 
It's just confusing in the instructions. <laughs> Absolutely nothing to it. So if all else fails, don't read now the instructions. Now it's time to install the flush button. Pretty much. This unit has a flush button here for a, a low volume flush on the right, on the left side, excuse me, and then a high volume on that side. So this is gonna line up. We mount it on top of the tank lid here and here, and those are gonna line up. And when you press one, it'll depress the appropriate buttons there for the amount of water flow that you want. All right, there you have it. I know I spent quite a bit of time in the toilet here, but you know, I'm excited. <laughs> I really am excited about it. You know, I mean, you know, when you, when you go outside, you have to go, you know, when it's a few weeks ago, it was snowing outside and, uh, and then it was raining. Okay, rain. okay. So yeah. you do that for a while. Doesn't take much to get us worked up, does it? Being, uh, Life's simple pleasures. Inside. All right, time to install a door. Uh, into the bedroom here. Uh, you mean it's the bathroom? Inch door. Oh yeah. And I got the pre-hung units, which already have the hole cut for the doorknob. And when it's pre-hung, you can't see the backside here, but basically it has hinges. It's already attached to hinges, hinges, and it's already in the frame. So you have to just put it in there and kind of get it leveled up, and then nail it down. Um, and it also has a casing here and the outside, this jam, which slides out. So this side slides out of here. And then you put the unit in from the back side, then this slides together, and then you shoot it together here. Okay, so I've got the door in the opening for the bathroom, actually. And I had to trim off the bottom there because I wanted the door a little bit lower to the floor, plus I want to trim it off. And I've got the spacer block in here because I'm going to have wood flooring. So rather than cut it later, I've got that spaced up so I can just slip the flooring underneath there and make it a little easier. And to level it up, I've got some uh, just like quarter inch wood shim in here, just a piece of plywood. And then actually, you can't see the shim there, there's another shim that went in there. These plastic shims here, just to fill up any gaps or whatever. And then I screwed it in with some leftover um, narrow screws, really, which was for the hardy board outside the hardy plank. And uh, that made there more like a finished screw. And they go in real small, so I'm gonna take a little bit of putty and clean that up. And uh, again, so. Uh, yeah, this is some of the plywood shims that I had left over, scrap plywood, and that kind of in to kind of fill that gap. And the whole point of the gap and stuff is to make sure that we've got things square. And, uh, you see the ball there not? Okay. Oh, it's square. Excuse me. Level. Because uh, you want to make sure your door is level this way, and then also you want to check it and make sure it's level this way, too. That way the door will balance on its own, swing freely. It won't want to pitch anyways, and it comes back in the jam correctly. So I've got to go around and make sure everything's framed up and square on the entire jam area as I screw it down. And then I'll go finish the other one. All right, I have the finished door pretty much installed here on the uh, inside part of the jam. And I've got my screws set. And so that adjusts things in and out. Once you get that set, and you can go ahead and shoot the rest of it in with a finish gun and uh, secure it firmly. But I put a, put those small screws in several areas to kind of get it to level up and get exactly what I want as I close the door, so I can keep the space even around the oops, even around the door there, uh, so that it's kind of even all the way around. And uh, it looks pretty good. It opens and closes fine. It, doesn't seem to drift too much. It kind of stays where it needs to be. It's a little bit of a tilt maybe this way, but no, actually, I mean, everything's level, so it's worked out really well. And then the other side of the jam is uh, just here. So this will go, and then it just, it'll slide into that one, into this groove, and that just gets nailed up in there. And then that's pretty much it. Here you see the outside casing is on, and the door is complete. Sorry, I can't get closer here. I mean, not far away. And uh, there it is finished up. Hey, that looks like a cross. Nice. That was originally designed in the door, I'm sure. At any rate, there it is. Just waiting for a door handle and some clear finish, and we'll call that baby done. Thank you, Jesus. You know, actually, I did read a book once where they designed crosses in the door like that. So in addition to being structurally help the framing they actually designed the cross in there to keep out evil spirits Boo! out of houses i did read that once not funny so there you are i might not have mentioned this yesterday uh with the other door but as i hang this other the next door is when you're leveling up you want to start with the hinge side so when you're hanging the door you basically want to level this edge up okay both this way and this way and make sure it's level and then screw that the hinge side first to the wall 
And that's the only way you start because then your door can swing level you can see where everything else and then everything else gets adjusted off of that level uh, as it goes around. So I'm under the underside of my deck here, and uh, underneath the house, the cabin as it were. I wonder where that blue tarp went. I've got a friend that's moved in here. Yeah, little bird's nest here, some chicks here. Okay, toilet number two, ready for install. Upstairs here in the loft. All right, on the previous uh, toilet install, my flange here was below the finished floor because I laid thick tile, so this was actually below the finished floor. So I had to use both of these gaskets last time uh, stacked on top of each other. In this case, the flange is actually above, a little above this finished floor. So instead of using both of them, I'm just going to use one. But I tried this one, and it's still a little thick, so it says to use the thinner one. And we're going to put that on and... Uh, that should be the right height once it's bolted down. That way you don't want the you don't want the throne rocking at all. If you know the throne's I mean? rocking, don't come knocking. All right, time for me to install my mirror so I can look, you know, see myself as the, the homeless guy that I am <laughs> before I go into town. So that's a good thing. At any rate, it comes with a little template here, and uh, you tape it up to the wall, and I've got to space it out between my outlet here and the top of the counter area here. And I don't have much room off the wall to make this work, but it's got a template here. This screw is actually going to go into a stud, so I use a small drill for that and a larger drill for this, which comes with, uh, let's see here, these anchor inserts that will go in there into the drywall. And same thing happened over here. I got one that's going to go into the stud and the other one's going to go through the drywall. So we'll get those installed in just a second. Oh, I guess I should mention that, yeah, they give you this template, which is great, and then also you just level it up at the level. There. and uh, get it nice and level so it seems pretty simple okay so there's the completed mirror and uh, okay yeah I should have put my shirt on but you know what it's hot out so think of the children and all right all right here's the rated G version of the new mirror install see I have my shirt on this time you know didn't want to have to have the whole partial nudity thing or something anyway as I was saying before if in case you never see the other one is uh, it tilts which is great because it kind of accommodates for the A-frame slope a little bit when I tilt it back. Nice moonshot. Can you hold it steady? Can you get a little more focused? That's better. That's, uh, well, ever hear of a tripod? So close. And uh, you know, I got the buttons here. Uh, this is like, you just have to a little bit there, just get a little bit of waste and tag, and then if you have more, you hit the double button. You really need one like for me when I eat Mexican. Button, maybe a fourth button. <laughs> All right, <laughs> say good night. Good night, man. <laughs>